ladies and gentlemen of the internet. My name is Dean, coming to you live through the power of the internet. And today is Throwback Thursday, and we're going to be taking a look at the Tandy Scientific Pocket Computer PC6. I purchased this computer back in 1987 when I was a sophomore in high school, and today we're going to do a little tutorial of it. We're going to go over some of the features of the pocket computer, and then we're going to do a quick two-minute teardown. So I hope you like this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment, and I'll try and get back to you. So let's begin, and let's take a look at the PC6. Hello and welcome to Throwback Thursday. Today we're going to be going back in time and taking a look at my 1987, that's when I purchased it, Tandy Pocket Scientific Computer PC6. Now this was a full function scientific calculator slash mini computer. Back then um, Radio Shack was real popular for uh, several of uh, prior versions of pocket PCs such as a I believe they had like a PC2 and a PC4. Um, we also have a PC7 that was the little brother to this computer. I will be doing a throwback Thursday to that as well. But today we want to focus on the PC6. This computer originally came with 8 kilobytes of memory and for I believe it was $39 you could buy an 8 kilobyte expansion module which I did purchase for this computer. It's a full function scientific calculator as well, which made it awesome when you programmed it in BASIC. All those scientific calculations could be easily thrown into your BASIC programming, making it a cinch to do some very advanced uh, calculations. In fact, um, I actually set it up to do integral calculus uh, my last year of uh, high school before I got my HP 28S, which we will take a look at that in a couple weeks. So we go ahead and turn it on, and I have it propped up here to keep the um, background light from shining on the, uh, the metal and on the screen. Um, you see it comes up with Ready P09, which is program zero. Um, this calculator has 10 program storage areas, P0 through P9. This calculator also had the uh, capability of storing your programs to a cassette tape. There's an interface connection on the right hand side of it and I do have the cable and I actually do have the uh, tape cassette interface for this calculator. So I want to take a look at some of the capabilities of it. First of all it had a 24 character screen which is pretty cool. Um, it allowed you to enter in a lot of commands at once and just keep on going and not having to worry about running out of room on the screen. Calculator ran pretty fast as well. I'm not sure what the megahertz rating of it was but as you can see if you made a mistake you could backspace go in there and fix it and then continue on with your calculations which is real nice when you're entering in a long stream of numbers. Hit enter and boom it was fast. Um, it did have a range of 9.9999 times 10 to the 99. So if we do a factorial of 69 gets you pretty close to that limit. Like I said it's a fully programmable in BASIC. It also had an assembler language as well. I never got into the assembler language. I kind of kept it uh, kept uh, to the simple basic um, allowed me to actually program the calculator on the fly in class. Example that we had we were doing statistics with probability and back in high school you know we had to flip a coin and write down our um, write down our uh, answers and keep track of how many heads and how many tails came up and usually should average out over time 50 out of 50. Um, with this calculator, all the other kids are flipping coins in class, taking forever. I decided, well, let's write a small basic program that uses the built-in random number generator on here, which is pretty cool. Hit the random number and boom, pops right up. What I did is I manipulated that number so that it uh, chose between zero and nine 
and divide it in half. Zero to four was heads and five to nine was tails and ran a four next loop that essentially counted it up. And I'll give you a little demonstration. I still have that program in here. Program one it was, how many flips? I could do like 50 flips. Hit enter, wait a few seconds and the results would pop up. Most of the time it was pretty close to the 50-50 mark and there it is, 24 heads, 26 tails. Now you, I'll actually go into the program mode, mode one, and shift list. And let me zoom in a little bit closer so that you can see that a little better and I can see that the reflection came back. Um, take a little closer look at that. There we go. Alright, so 10 is clear. I won't go through in detail because most of you guys understand basic. 20, print how many flips. And then I had it input the... Um, input a variable n little four next loop there so x equals one to n so let's say fifty flips there's the actual calculation and give me the random number that I was looking for from zero to nine so you saw that random number um, before you multiplied it by ten and then I took the integer portion of that there is the first if then statement. This calculator did not, have, did not have an else function, so I had to do it with two then statements. So if f is 0 to 4, then heads equals heads plus 1. Same thing if f is greater than 4, then tails equals tails plus 1. Next x. And then when we go ahead and print the results, calculator also had a uh, primitive sound and then a beep one which is a high note and then a beep which is a low note so once it got done and tallied it up um, it beeped for you and the reason I put that in there was that if you put in like a hundred flips or a thousand flips it would take quite a while for it to uh, finish up and that way you knew when it was done you'd hear it beep and that was it so that was a pretty simple program mode zero again put your back into the uh, run mode as I said before all of these functions here sign all of these things can be used in your program another kind of neat thing that this computer had was a function memory which you could very quickly put like a formula on the stack input it right away and then do calculations on there so if you had the uh, if you wanted to do like the area of a circle, um, you could type in there A equals pi r squared. Shift pi times r squared. Go ahead and hit the function memory button in. and now verify that it's in there now we can hit calculate ask for the radius 10 and there's the area so you can enter in these equations quickly into the function memory and then get your answers right away very powerful very very powerful again 16k of memory I'm going to zoom back out a little bit here. Again, circa 1986, I believe they came out with this. This was actually a Casio calculator. It was uh, licensed from Casio. The same with its uh, little brother, the PC7, which we'll take a look at in the next week or two. Again, it had a ton of functionality. It had tremendous uh, statistics functions on there. Programmable. Lots of different symbols. You can see the uh, keyboard had... Uh, each key had multiple uses on there. 
so I hope you like that. That was just a quick little look at the uh, workings of the PC6. I do have uh, an extra one that I got from eBay that was a parts computer and we'll take a little look at the inside of it. Um, there's the outside of the case. It was nice. It truly was a pocket computer. It fit in your, uh, your pants pocket. There's the interface for the um, closer look at it. Proprietary connection for the uh, printer or the uh, tape cassette. Ran on two 2032 batteries. I believe 100 hours is what you got out of it on two batteries. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look on the inside. Alright, so here's the parts computer. And we're going to take her apart and take a look on the inside. This has been opened up, I can tell, by somebody else multiple times because the screw heads are pretty stripped. I had to use a regular screwdriver instead of a Phillips. And actually, the middle one is actually missing. So let's uh, see if we can get this cover off. There we go. And this one, too, also had an 8K. And I can see they got it from Casio. Take a little closer look at that. There's the 8K memory expansion module. And here are the two CR2032 batteries. And it looks to be that they have a battery backup as well in there. So let's go ahead and take that memory module off. There we go. There's the RAM package. I'm looking at the camera upside down, so sorry about that. Moving it around. And that's actually a soft and spongy feeling. And as you can see, this is Casio. So this is a Casio RP-8. 8, 8 kilobyte RAM module. You can see on the inside there how it connects. All right, then we have two chips on the top right away that you can see. First one is a Toshiba, this one right here, TC5565FL-15L. For all you cal calculator aficionados. And then the second one is a Japan. Take a look at that one there. We get up a little closer. That's a MB. At an MB, I can't see it. 64H440. And that was produced in the 20th week of 87. So that's a date code on there. 20th week of 87. So let's go ahead and let's take this guy apart. These are really not. All the kids were jealous in school because it made math go so much easier. Not that it was cheating either because you still had to know what you were doing. That's why the, my teachers they had no problems with me using it. Um, still had to know your concepts and you still had to show your work. But it did make life a little easier. You didn't make the stupid mathematical errors. All right, so what we have in there is a DL1216 Duracell 3-volt battery backup battery. Kind of neat to have that back then. Then again, you don't want to lose your programs, especially if you did not have a um, tape cassette to uh, back them up to. All right, let's take the outside case off here. And I got a magnetic mat here, so we'll use that. Just to not lose my screws. Hope you guys enjoy these type of videos. Like I said this is my new channel. 
I know I've seen some on the internet that I like watching on YouTube and I enjoy them. So I figured I have a lot of neat old things that I've saved over the years that I figured uh, you guys would enjoy looking at as well. All right, so there we're in Lake Flynn. Actually, I'm very surprised. That is some really quality work on that CPU board. Good surface mount. I suppose it was later, getting close to the 90s. I remember the electronics you used to have in the, the 80s and 70s. But this is all surface mount. Pretty neat, actually. Let's see if we can flip this. You got to be careful. We have the ribbon cable that goes up to the screen here. And then it also has a potentiometer for screen contrast. Nice capacitor here. And I can lift that out. There we go. Pretty simple. I didn't figure there'd be anything on the back side of that circuit board. Everything is contained on that board. You can see the uh, membrane keypad here. Nothing to really see there. I'm not going to take that apart. Contacts. A little bit of shielding there. And let's put her back together. So there you go. There's a quick look at the PC6. Little uh, two minute teardown there. Pretty neat computer. Had a lot of good times with this thing. Made, uh, like I said, I made, uh, especially senior math before I took calculus. Uh, it was great. I had some neat programs. Maybe I'll list some of them if I can remember them. I had a program that actually calculated definite integrals using Simpson's rule. Uh, it was really neat. Um, <laughs> actually, it was pretty cool. They, my, like I said, my instructors in high school were were awesome. Uh, I remember his name was uh, Mr. Krause was my calculus teacher. And uh, yeah, he, uh, he encouraged me to get into programming and computers and that's what I did. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, Throwback Thursday, we'll have more videos coming up. I have the little brother this one, the PC7, and then I have the entire, uh, I should say the entire, but I have quite a few HP calculators. Um, back my senior year, I picked up the 28S, and then when I went to college, I picked up a 48SX, and then uh, a 59, I'm sorry, 49, and then the HP 50G as well. So we'll take a look at those. We'll go into programming and a little bit of RPN. Got any questions on this computer, the Tandy PC6, just let me know and I'll try and answer them for you. Other than that, uh, have a great day. Check this out. I reassembled the pocket PC, put the batteries, put the memory module back in there. Just for shoots and giggles, I went to turn it on and it fired right up. Awesome. So now I got two Tandy Pocket Scientific computers I get to play around with. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Until next time, have a great day.